Welcome back to the Dice Tower. We wish we were in 3D. Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of videos about games and the people who played them. And now, here are your hosts, Tom and Holly Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower! Yes, welcome. I'm Tom Vassell, and this is my daughter, Holly. And today, it's been a while... But we wanted to get back into my list of great games. I've done my top 100 games. I guess uh, a couple months I'll be doing my top 100 games again. But until that point, I'm talking about my second 100 games. These are games that don't get a lot of press, but they're still terrific games. Played almost 1,700 different games, and these games are in the top 200, which means they are excellent. So let's get started. The first game I keep in this plastic box because I got rid of the cardboard box that it came in, and that's Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia is a game about making pizza in which you are using different ingredient cards like this pepperoni and such too, and mushrooms and peppers. And you're doing that so that you can fill out different pizza orders. And it's a game of memory. It's a difficult game to teach, actually. It's one of those games where I actually just show people how to play it, and then we play it, and then they understand quickly. But it's a fun little memory game. There's lots of different cards included in the game, and very enjoyable. I recommend it. The next game is Key Largo, and Key Largo is a game about deep sea diving. Now, it's a fun family game. As you go across this board, and, and again, I think this game is almost criminally not known, but you're going across this board here and diving in different areas and going to the store and buying equipment. And when you dive in the cards, you never know what you might find. You might find five crates of gold for a hundred that are you know worth $100. Or you might find six crates of goods. But every once in a while, you'll find a monster, and you have to be prepared for that. And it's very simple and fun. Try to outguess your opponent. Use your money wisely. But it works really well as a family game. The really funny, cartoony characters that you're using to move around the island and to go diving brings a very enjoyable thematic flavor to the game. It's one that I like quite a bit um, and again it's one I wish more people knew about and that's Key Largo. Game number three Mission Red Planet. Now Mission Red Planet could possibly make my top 100. I do seem to play it often enough. Mission Red Planet is about players going on different spaceships during a steampunk era and going to the wonderful place called Mars. Now, Mission Red Planet is basically an area control game where players are trying to get to Mars, and they're using their little astronauts here, these little astronaut pieces, which are basically just little discs. But... And they're flying on little rocket ships. But what makes the game really interesting are these decks of cards that you have. Each turn you play a roll, and that roll allows you to do something different. Maybe attack another player on Mars. Maybe blow up one of the spaceships. Maybe put three people on one of the spaceships. Maybe change the destination of one of the spaceships. And so you're putting these people on spaceships. They're then flying up to Mars, landing on one of the uh, sections of Mars, and then at the end of the different rounds, you're going to get points for controlling it. It's basically an area control game, but it's one that has a whole pile of themes shoved in it. Uh, very, very enjoyable. Very interactive as you attack other players, blow up their spaceships and such. Uh, but a lot of fun. And, and what's really neat is that it takes place in about maybe only an hour. So this is one that I would highly recommend. And that's Mission Red Planet. The next game is not one that I might recommend quite as much um, for everybody, and that's Mall of Horror. Now, if you see the guy in the front here, he is certainly not a pleasant guy. What do you think? You like that guy? Pretty? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This Mall of Horror is a game in the zombie genre. And it's almost unfortunate that the artwork is so dark, because I know they're trying to come across with a zombie flavor. Here you can see the mall that you're all walled up inside. 
I understand that, again, that they're going for the zombie flavor, but the game is so lighthearted and fun that I wish the zombies were a little bit more cartoony. But be that as it may, you get little plastic zombies in the game who are attacking you, and you're all holed up inside a mall, and you have different characters, which are basically just a bunch of wooden discs. Each character is put on a wooden disc, and you have two, three, four characters, depending on how many people are involved in the game. But what's interesting about the game is that the zombies are attacking, and eventually they're going to break through, and the only way you can escape the zombies is to throw someone to them and keep going. It's a voting game. You're basically saying, oh, I'm sorry. You are going to the zombies. <laughs> and there's different ways and voting can occur. You can get a gun, which gives you an extra vote. Uh, there's guys who are better fighting against the zombies. But it's, it's a kind of game that you could leave the table very angry, very upset about. Because, oh my, you know, you just threw me to the zombies. There was no reason. You lied and said you'd help me at this point. It's a very big negotiation, back and forth game. And I really enjoy it for that reason. It's a lot of fun. You have to have the right crowd, but it can be really entertaining when you do so. Again, the artwork is dark. The theme itself, you know, is kind of gruesome in a sense. I mean, it is zombies, which is why I think I might like the game Lifeboats a little better. Because the, even though the theme there is throwing people off a ship, it seems a little bit less gruesome than zombies. And yet this game, every time I brought it out, it's been a blast. It's very interesting to see how people's personalities reveal themselves among a game like this. So, Mall of Horror. And finally, the last game I want to talk about today is Java. Again, not a very pleasant guy in the front. It's part of a series of games with these masks on. Java is a... Uh, unlike the other four games I mentioned today, Java is most definitely the most cerebral game. You literally have a million options on your turn. You're able to place these tiles on the board, and you're able to place different cards and different things all over the board, and there's just so many places you can play stuff, and you're trying to optimize the best to be able to move your people onto top of these tiles and to get different locations and build cities, and the game itself isn't that complicated. It's an action point system, which means each turn you pick one of these, you, you pick several actions, and you have so many actions per turn that you can use. It's actually a pretty decent two-player game, which is why I hung, have hung on to it, and I like it a lot. The reason it's not my top 100, because I really think it's a great game, is that it is a long time, and if you play with someone who has analysis paralysis, the kind of person who says, uh, then, what, you know, then the game can really slow down. And so, a very enjoyable game, but not one that... Uh, I want to play all the time because it's very cerebral. It's kind of a quiet game. Everyone sits around the table, and it's quiet when I play. And I, usually I'm going to move for something that's a little bit more boisterous than that. But still, an excellent game, and I, and I give it high thumbs up, and that is Java. All right. Well, those are five more great games. We'll see you. Keep watching our review feed. I'm getting more reviewers to come in and do video reviews on the Dice Tower. You'll see all kinds of different reviews, and I hope you enjoy them. Until the next time, anyway, I'm Tom Vassell, and this is my perky little co-host, Holly. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. 